the the next development on the on the MG was um, what's now known as the 1428 or the flat rat car, uh, the 1440 or flat rat car, which um, was brought about simply because Morris changed the style of their their own radiator. Now, at this stage, Kim, Kimber decided that um, he ought to have a completely different radiator, not just use a Morris one. So he produced a different shroud, and uh, that on the 1428 on the tour uh, is a fairly typical late version of the 1428 rad, and it's beginning to look like an MG radiator. Other than that, the cars are pretty identical. Slightly better chassis. Um, they're slightly heavier. Um, but they're pretty well identical. This is a 1927 model. It's called a 1428. It had uh, some nice little features. At, the, at 1928, uh, 27, I'm sorry, uh, these cars did not have self-starters. So you had to crank it, and the choker was very handy right here. Another little feature it had, the dim your lights in the evening. There's a little lever here. You just pull it back, and your he headlamps go down. Cecil Kimber the, was very fond of sailing, and he has his little octagon air intake to cool the cockpit. It's a little boat feature. The fourteen forty comes about um, because in the fourth year of production they decided to call the car the Mark IV having not called the first three years anything at all, just 1428. Um, and in the fourth year they decided to call it the Mark IV. And so it became the 1440 Mark IV. It's a simple alliteration. Does it? It, 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 it's something of a sales gimmick. The, the cars were rated 14 RAC horsepower, which was the way British cars were sold at that time. Um, and the, uh, the illusion is that uh, it's supposed to be 14 rated horsepower, 28 developed horsepower, and the later car is supposed to be 40 developed, but uh, no way did it develop 40 horsepower. The, uh, the early cars were developing between 28 and 30, and we don't think the later cars were developing any more at all. They, didn't, they did have a carburetor change, but um, we don't really think the power was increased significantly. Interestingly, the, car, the, the engines were reworked by MGs. The cylinder head was removed and polished, and uh, the ports were usually polished. And the cars did run freer than the standard Morris ver version, and they were geared somewhat higher. So at a cruising speed of uh, 60 miles an hour, um, the engine was doing considerably less RPM. Now, rather interestingly, the 1440, in its third year of production, when the 1440 name tag first appeared, uh, one of the advertisements claimed that the car would average 40 miles an hour and some people have suggested, me included, that um, the 1440 came about because they suggesting that it would average 40 miles an hour. And then the Mark IV came along after that. So it all, it all happened fairly quickly. Now, uh, the 14 horse car ran from 1924 through to 1928 almost without um, significant mechanical development. And that's a fairly static period in, in the MG history. Uh, but uh, they went up in production from a handful a year to um, two or three hundred a year. So the factory was um, sort of propagated. The original factory was just a pile of sheds in the middle of Oxford. And they moved out uh, during 1925 to um, part of a radiator factory in the Morris Empire. And then uh, during 1927, they moved down to Edmund Road in Cowley to the first purpose-built MG factory. Indeed, the only purpose-built MG factory. Because where they moved after that, to Abingdon, was in, in fact um, part of a factory that had made horse saddles and greatcoats for, uh, for the army during the Great War, the First World War. 
explain the Pavlova works. And the car is a 1928 1440 Mark IV. Why they call it a Mark IV, no one knows. We don't know what the Mark I, the Mark II and the Mark III were, but this was a Mark IV. And it was the last of this type of car. After this, they, they produced the M's, the little M's and the 1880s. So this was the last of this type of car. Uh, my particular car, I it, it came across it in a barn in Suffolk. My son found it in a barn in Suffolk, Suffolk, England. We know very little about its early history, except that it was originally owned by an Indian prince who was probably at Cambridge University in 1928. We then jumped to about the 1950s, uh, when it was known to have raced at Silverstone. There are only four of them in the world. There's uh, mine, there's one in, in southern England, or <coughs> excuse me, owned by Philip Baden-Powell, who is here with an Allingham MG. He has uh, the only other one in England. There's one in Southern Ireland owned by John Steins of Dublin. And the, the fourth one is uh, in the York Museum in Western Australia. Uh, one feature which you will be most interested in, the engine was originally a 1913 American Continental Red Seal or Red Star engine. Uh, that Sir William Morris, which later became Lord Nuffield, he bought the manufacturing rights and had it manufactured in England by the Hotchkiss Company who had made armaments during the First World War. And uh, he got the Hotchkiss Company to manufacture this engine around about 1916 in England. But because Hotchkiss, all the machine tools were made to uh, thread in metric, uh, French metric threads, all this engine has meant French metric threads on it, as did many subsequent engines built by, well, um, it was originally Hotchkiss, but it later became Morris engines. The same engine is in the Bullnose uh, MG, but also in the Bullnose Morris, which is a very popular vintage car in Britain. You know, you can get sort of 40 Bullnose Morrises at a, at a vintage rally. It's a very robust engine. It's a side valve engine. Uh, I think you would call it an L-head engine over here. It had a three-speed gearbox. Uh, renowned for its uh, it, it, the noise it creates in first and second gear. You can tell one a mile off. Uh, this particular car, um, as far as I'm aware, it is the oldest two-seater MG with the MG logo on the front. The, accepted MG logo on the front and it was built by the MG car company whereas the earlier cars not unsimilar to this uh, had the Morris um, Morris Super Sports badge on the front with some with a small MG logo in the center and they were built by Morris garages which is the where you get the name MG from but they, were, they have a plate on that says built by Morris garages this one has a plate on, built by the MG Car Company. Uh, they built, I think, 33 of these in 1928, and about 16 in 1929, of these, this particular body style. And they're available in, uh, in red and, and aluminum, blue and aluminum, and I understand that there were four white ones made. Mechanically, it is very, very similar to the Bullnose. The chassis is slightly different. It, it, this is a wider chassis than the Bullnose. These, all these cars were based on the Morris Oxfords and Morris Cowleys of, of that period.